Hey guys, Game Methuselah here. I'm doing a third video now on getting started on the painting series because that's what everyone seems to be the most interested in. I wanted to stop with some Maya Copas beforehand. Uh, number one, in my first video, I was shameful and forgotten Legends of the Five Rings. I'm Crane Clan that Matt Colville did a video on. I totally brain faded and uh, well, that's the way it goes. And without editing, of course, which is the problem I'm having right now, um, you got to see that. The second one was I asked you to go to my uh, Gone But Not Forgotten Games site on uh, Facebook. Uh, no, excuse me, on YouTube, but of course it is on Facebook. And as everyone said, I can't find it. It's on Facebook. And this was actually my first foyer into YouTube. So um, we're going from there. Um, I'm apologizing again for using the, the phone. I do have a camera somebody gave me. But um, I'm not 100% sure I like it, and now I have to go and find a mic. Uh, we're playing with it. Really what I'm looking into is some editing. Um, I actually like the phone, and I've got a good feedback from people that the phone's actually not so bad. Uh, the video and the voice quality seems to be pretty good. But it has limitations, and the editing seems to be at least what I need to look into the most because that provides me with the ability to make good videos. Um, and my sign has done pretty good. I'm getting lots of change. I, I hope soon to have saved up enough money to buy all those uh, quality products. And uh, I'm looking into the information that people have given me, and I appreciate that. So hopefully we'll have something soon. So to start on the how to speed paint miniatures, I wanted to do a little thing on prep work, um, which is usually important. Uh, I think it's always important. So if you're a really veteran painter at this point and you have lots of stuff, you can pretty much turn me off and, and go watch Critical Role. But um, if you if you want to watch, I'm going to go ahead there, go through this as fast as I possibly can to give you a basic idea of how to get prepped up for figures. Now, um, there's a lot of different ways to go, but I will tell you what you need to start with first and foremost. Everyone needs an X-Acto knife or some kind of what they call utility knife. Uh, this one actually is an Ace Hardware knife that's a copy of an X-Acto knife. I like it better because the tightener is on the back instead of the front, so it tends not to loosen up when I'm playing with it. This is actually a real X-Acto knife. I don't really like the large size handle, um, but it works, and if you like this type, it works well. Um, the other thing you need is a file. If you're using metal miniatures, which is what mostly Game Methuselah does, I, I think... Um, as I get older, I like the plastics because they weigh less and they're easier to carry around, lots of them. Um, but still, metal was my uh, forte, and everything really was metal when I started. Plastics were not really that common, so I used them. Uh, a thing to have with metals is you get like an X-Acto file, flat on one side, rounded on the other side. You clean them out with the X-Acto knife to get the flash off. You sand them a little bit with the file. You use the flat bottom to file the bottom of the base so you can glue it onto a base um, or you can put a magnet on it or something like that. Um, good to get. All these things are really cheap so it's not really a problem. If you're using the plastic miniatures, uh, hard plastic miniatures like Games Workshop, uh, some of the newer uh, sets that are coming out that they're making in hard plastic, uh, a file works. Emery board type file. Um, and these things... Uh, I like the reinforced ones that you can get at hobby shops, but any ones that even use your nails can work. The advantage in these is they tend not to bend as, as readily, so they're good for sanding the bottoms of bases, like if you're doing any of the pre-painted plastics, you sand the bottom, you get an even fit, so you can glue magnets on them. Now, we'll go to talking about that in a moment, because there's different ways of, of looking at that. Um, sandpaper works but really only on the plastic figures if you freeze them. If you buy any of the soft plastic figures, like a lot of the Kickstarter from Reaper were, where they were really soft, um, I always suggest that everybody freezes them before they play with them. That gives you a couple of hours to actually sand um, and or, you know, after you use the X-Acto knife to cut and clean the trim out, so you can do a little sanding to even perfect it a little bit more, sand the base if you wish, um, and that makes it good. Um, then eventually they thaw out and they're going to have some flexibility, which, you know, I don't like as much, but it's still, these figures are inexpensive, which obviously is very helpful if you're trying to get a collection going. These figures are now soft, are made out of somewhat hard plastic now, as opposed to some of the older ones, which were made out of soft plastic. Uh, again, the sanding helps. Um, you need some cyanoacrylic glue, crazy glue type stuff that you can get 
pretty much anywhere, hardware, game store, pretty much everybody sells it. Pretty much inexpensive. Um, it allows you to glue things together if you need to, glue them on bases, glue them on magnets, uh, and that type of item. As for magnets, Game Enthusiast uses the old magnet strip, one inch, non-adhesive. Never, 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 if you get these, use the pre-adhesive. It's really time-saving and it's really cool. And the adhesive falls off in about 15 years, which means that as you build this huge collection of miniatures, sometime when you get a little older, eh, your figures are no longer magnetized, and that's not fun. So, always get the non-adhesive backs. But, a new thing that's been coming out much more recently in stores, a little bit more money, but very effective, are the little metal magnets. Now, I've used them on a few figures. This is a model tank that I made, and it has these magnets, and they stick together and they're obviously very firm. Most hobby shops carry them. I'm sure you can find them online anybody who does supply magnets. Very thin. The big advantage I found in those is Craig Steele, who does a lot of these plastics, just stick, can stick a magnet on the bottom and um, there's a little recessed area here. Magnet doesn't cover up any space. You put it on the board. There's no rays like I have on my figures because I have larger bases. Now, I like the raised because it gives me something to pick the figure up with without handling, you know, manhandling the painted surface. But these work really well. Now, the reason I keep talking about magnets is because that's what I do. However, a lot of people don't care for the magnets. They would rather transport their figures in the little plastic boxes with foam. That's great. I use metal toolboxes. Uh, I've been using them for years. That's the way I started. Uh, I use small ones sometimes, up to medium size, larger, two drawer, three drawer, four drawer boxes, whatever you can lift. When I was younger and more stud muffin-y, the three and four drawers seem fine. As I get a bit older, I kind of like the two drawer, one drawer. You know, they're easier for me to carry. Um, either way you choose to protect your miniatures and transport your miniatures is really up to you. Preferably not in a bag. That's usually not the best thing for your paint jobs. But um, any way you like it. I like the tool metal toolboxes. Always have. Um, I like them because they're kind of bulletproof. I mean, if my house falls down on them, I have a chance of some of them surviving. Uh, the only weakness tends to come is occasionally if they're in your car and you have to suddenly break and the box maybe moves. Some of them might slide, come off the, you know, turn over and fall off if they're not, you know, on large enough bases. Um, but there's no abrasion normally. I mean, sometimes foam, it's, they're hard to get at. Um, you could abrade the paint jobs by moving them in and out of the foam. Uh, it's hard to pull them out in a large quantity and put them back in a large quantity. It's hard for people to see them if they want to pick out a character to use, or they're hard for you to see when you're looking for your monsters for the adventure. Choice is up to you. Um, again, my preference is always magnets and metal boxes, but again, that's going to be up to you. Um, other tools you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need brushes. Uh, if you, uh, you can get anything from like 5.0s, 10.0 brushes on up. But since we're going to normally talk about speed painting, um, most of my brushes are going to look like this, which means that I have maybe the smallest, a single ot. I might have, I might have something smaller, but usually tend not to use it for speed painting. Up to a one, uh, or two, normally nothing really bigger than that. Um, and those are the brushes that we'll use. This is about how many you need. Uh, they're, you know, they're fine. Uh, this brush you're going to want for maybe dry brushing larger creatures. So if you get hold of one of Matt Coville's uh, new dragons and you want to speed paint that and you're going to want to do some dry brushing, uh, a larger brush. Uh, I have some that get substantially bigger. Uh, you can get them as large as you want for larger surface areas for doing dry brushing. Um, but then again, that's going to be up to you. But the speed painting, I find that these brushes work great. You don't have to spend a lot of money. And again, I don't know what people's economy looks like. So I always talk from the cheap and then work up. So you can, you can do what you need to do with these and they'll do good service for you. And I think you'll be plenty happy. If we get into the rub and buffing, which is the way I do most of my metal work. Uh, some of you may have seen that on my, um, Twitter page that I did a while back on, you know, how to get prepped up for figures. I usually have these brushes. And the interesting thing about this product called Rub and Buff Silver, Rub and Buff Gold, is brushes are great. This product seems to never dry out. I mean, these brushes are more than likely 20 years old. And if I'm gonna do like orc armor where I don't want it to be really bright, I'll just take my silver and I'll brush it on and I'll get a really dark kind of crude looking metal. Um, the more you burnish it, the more you brush it, the more it burnishes and shines the metal. So if you really put it on there, rub, 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 
you'll get a really shiny metal effect. Um, if you put it on there and just rub it a couple times and maybe not a lot of the material, it'll be darker and obviously look like a much cruder metal. Uh, same goes with the gold. You can put it on there and have sort of like a bronzy look or you can really burnish and it'll, uh, it'll um, look like very bright gold. The neat thing about it is after about 24 hours or less, you can wash it and do all kinds of things. So a lot of times I'll have these things brushed uh, silver and then I'll lay down a red or green or, or, or yellow or blue ink and you'll get a blue metallic look. And now I did a lot of this with when I was doing Space Marines, uh, a lot of 40K figures and things like that, or anything in the future where I want it to look kind of cool. Also, when you're doing rub and buff, depending on what color you use as a base color. So if you use black, you get one effect. If you use dark brown, you get sort of that rusty metal old orky effect. If you're doing elves, you paint it really super dark blue. So when you when you rub and buff it, you get this sort of bluish sheen that looks like, wow, really expensive, you know, uh, mithril style metal or something. Again, this is all going to be up to you as we go. Um, other than that, then you buy paints. And as far as paints go, I'm not real particular. Um, there's all kinds of paints out there. You can spend uh, a little bit of money and go to maybe an artist shop and buy cheap paint, because it even says it's cheap. Uh, you can buy Vallejo, which is good, uh, but expensive. Uh, I like Vallejo a lot. It lays down really pretty. It does a nice even coat. Um, they come in real small containers. They're not inexpensive, but they have a lot of good colors. Like I'm using them on my Polish army. It works out really well. Games Workshop has some nice paints. Again, they're kind of proud of their paints, so um, if you're willing to expect a uh, little savings and cost, not always your best choice. A lot of times art supplies have these little, you know, Liquitex and stuff, but strangely enough, Steve Kish, um, who was a world-class painter, used to go over to Michael's and get Delta Cream Coat, and I would be like, oh, you paint with that? And... You know, for about the last 10 years of his painting, this is almost exactly what he used on everything. He had tons and tons of colors, a rainbow of them. And 10 years later, I'm still using these. I got all his paints and sort of to keep his memory alive, I started painting miniatures using his paints. And I still have them and they haven't dried out yet and they haven't lost their pigment. And I'm like, I don't know what to say. So I actually have broke down and bought some blacks and some whites and some you know, variable other colors because black's about the only color you'll ever actually run out of before it usually dries up. But for some reason, these weird paints don't dry out. Now, they may have because they were Steve's and they have some magical energy. I don't know. But you might give them a try. And again, if you're on a budget, um, go from there. You're going to maybe want to get some washes and inks and things like that. The only one you really need is brown, sort of a light brown to, to if you're going to use a wash. I kind of love this one Games Workshop prog called Earthshade. It's kind of like skill in a bottle. Again, because it's Games Workshop, it's not cheap. But you're going to use it on almost all your miniatures. And I've had this now for about a year. And it's I haven't used half of it yet. And I've painted a lot of figs. It's a nice product. I, I, I hate to recommend a product, but like I said, I spend my money on it. I'm not the greatest fan of Games Workshop, so you know if I'm using it, you can really bet I think it's a good product. Flesh wash might be good too, um, but again, that'll be up to you. Now, as far as the colors you need, you need black, you need white. I suggest you get a flesh color of some sort because that makes it a little easier than mixing your own, but you can. You're going to want to modify tones, you know, on figures. So if it's sort of a dwarven figure and you want more of a ruddy color, you can add a little brown. If it's, you know, elven, you might want to add a little white or something. You make it, you know, change the tone. And that'll that'll mix to suit you as you go. And then a flesh wash is nice because it's, again, we'll get into those techniques when I'm speed painting. Um, I think you should get a dark brown. I think you should get a tan color. Now, you need three primary colors for sure, which is, of course, yellow, blue, and red. Um, I suggest you buy a green too, even though you can make it, of course, with the primaries, but green you're going to use all the time because we're painting fantasy figures most of the time. And that is a very common color. Um, orange and purple you can buy. And again, I'd suggest you do it to save time, but that's up to you. Now, Vallejo, a lot of these color companies make very specific certain types of colors. So if there's some color you want, like a crimson blue, you know, or peacock or red or whatever, you're going to find it and say, yeah, I want that. Or a Napoleonic color, or like in the case of my poles, I bought uh, 143 green-brown, which is pretty much exactly what the Polish uniform looked like. 
So those are good, and you'll do those as you advance. But really, to start out, you just need the basic colors. I suggest you buy a middle-range gray. There's no point in mixing black and white together to get the gray you want, but you can. You can always add black to make it darker, add a little white to make it lighter, and you'll have the full range of grays. Um, I'd buy silver and gold paint, even though, as I said, I rub and buff 99% of my metallic features. It's always have good to have in case you need to fix a oops, or if you got to paint a brooch or something where you've already painted over it and you didn't rub and buff it, or when you were painting, oops, you, you got over it, you can fix it with the color and it, it works out great. Um, best thing to do is, like I said, clean the miniatures with the, if they're soft plastics or even the hard plastics, I suggest you use soap and water and clean them, let them sit for a while and freeze them and you'll be ready to go. Uh, I think at this point I've covered most of what I wanted to do. Uh, again, I maybe invested a primer for metal paints, uh, for metal miniatures, excuse me, uh, because the metal tends to have oxidation issues down the line, and it's always good to prime them, get them ready to go. So at this point, I will let you go. Uh, I think uh, at least you got the basics here, uh, and we can get you a little few things to get advanced. I hope to be doing an actual painting demo for you on uh, the next few days more likely into the weekend or whatever, depending on how the rest of this week goes. Um, but until then, I wanted to thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all the good feedback I'm getting from people. And until we speak again, fight me devil's fight, for I hate peace. Have a good night.